a, an invisible layer of organization that I like to kind of imagine is over here on the left, even smaller than documents, is the coding panels, the custom coding um, that we're gonna be able to do with the next point. So let's go ahead and take a look into this invisible coding that I'd like to talk about. Go ahead and close this out, go into training discovery database. So if I run any sort of search or click into a folder or anything like that, and it takes me to my grid view, once I click into the title of the document, it takes me into the document level view. We can see that this is a Word document um, entitled Enron Corp doc. That is also a attachment to a parent email, uh, a datum inc. I can bulk action code all of these documents at the same time by clicking bulk action or select and then select this family, or I can review them individually. But what do I mean by reviewing them? These, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle back and forth, duplicate, turn, and go back to settings, coding. So I'm toggling back and forth between settings and coding and the actual document level viewer. Because whenever a document is imported into next point, the default status for them when it comes to whether they are responsive or if they're privileged is going to be that they have not yet been reviewed, which makes sense. But if I were to jump, even though I viewed the document, if I were to jump and then come back to it, it still says not reviewed because I haven't made any changes. I have to make the changes and then save them. It will show that I've viewed this document, but it will not have changed anything from uh, a coding reviewing standpoint. So um, responsive status is more so internal while, as, while privilege status is more external. Let me go ahead and explain. So you can mark a document saying that it is responsive, non-responsive, requires follow-up. You can mark a document saying that it's privileged or not privileged, but you also have the ability to say why a document is responsive. And this is all custom. So saying it's responsive and then selecting why that document is responsive. So I could say this document is responsive for breach of contract and wrongful termination or whatever I put in here. But all of these things that are listed here are customized in the settings coding feature. So you can see confidential communication, breach of contract, fraud, that wrongful termination, all of these things have been created in these responsive issues. If I go to that blank database and go to settings and coding, you'll see that there are no responsive issues when you first create a database. You have to go ahead and customize them yourself by clicking on create new, typing in the responsive issue that you want to identify, giving it a prefix, giving it a certain color that it will be applied to it, and then hit create, and that will show up in here. And I recommend having an internal meet and confer. If you recall the external meet and confer under the federal rules of civil procedure, um, I, I recommend having an internal meet and confer with your own review team before you start that review process to, to determine, okay, what is this case about? What do we want to identify as we're going through and reviewing these documents? And setting up that custom coding before you start that review process so that you don't get halfway through or all the way through a review and then say, oh man, it would have been nice to be able to review documents and find documents that pertain to a specific, this specific issue that we did not think about before. Because then you have a couple of ways about going about it. You can either um, re-review those documents again after having created the issue, or you can say, well, better luck next time. We'll, we'll figure it out and, and set ourselves up for success a little bit more next time. So I highly recommend having these conversations beforehand with everyone to make sure that we're all on the same page as to how this review is supposed to go about and what you should be looking to identify. And when you do find documents, what those next action steps should be. So um, the responsive issues, if you're coding the documents and say, we're gonna be able to later on, after we finish our review, search for any documents that pertain to breach of contract. And we can pull those up very quickly and very easily. 
Why I say it's internal is because when we produce to opposing counsel, we're not going to want to give them insight into any additional insight into our documents as to why they're responsive. We're just going to give them the documents and say, here you go. Here are our documents that are responsive and they are not privileged. That's all you need to know. Here you go. Obviously, don't want to give them any additional insight into our strategy um, that we don't have to according to our ESI protocol. So that's why these are internal, is they allow you to differentiate documents based on the internal uh, issues that you've identified. Whereas privileged is gonna be more external, where again, this is customizable underneath responsive issues. You can customize the privilege codes. I believe that the only ones that come prepackaged are attorney client, work product, and consulting expert, but you can also create your own. Like I created one for secret formula, like if I was working on a case between Coca-Cola and Pepsi and any documents that pertain to Coke's secret formula, I might want to say these documents are privileged because of they pertain to the secret formula. And so this is going to be important. So let's say this is attorney client privilege. You can go ahead and say uh, when you generate that privilege log, these documents are privileged and they're being withheld because they are privileged. And here are the reasons why each document is being withheld as opposed to just saying, yep, no, these documents are not being produced just because, yeah, they're, they're privileged. Don't even ask about it. Uh, in all likelihood, the judge is gonna make you go back and re-review those documents anyways um, and give reasons for why each one is not being produced. So that's why these are external is for that privilege log purposes. So the last thing here under discovery fields that I wanna point out is this confidentiality status, which is found right under here as well. The confidentiality status. I believe the only ones that are co um, come packaged in are highly confidential and confidential in all caps. So if there are any documents that are confidential that you want to have stamped with confidential on each page of that document, you can go ahead and say, select it and say confidential. And when we go through that bait stamping process and it re-images those documents for production, it's going to stamp any documents that have com a confidentiality status code applied to them with whatever is stamped on there. So in this case, it would be confidential in all caps. But again, this is also customizable. And the reason I like to point that out is because I've created one, like I've created a highly confidential attorney eyes only if that's something you wanna use. But I also created one that has nothing to do with confidentiality where it says Jack rules. And I did that because uh, A, maybe because I'm a little bit narcissistic, but B, I like to show that you can stamp whatever you want on here if you have a specific reason to um, stamp uh, subsets of documents with whatever it is that you're typing out there. So I could have all 12 of these pages stamped with Jack rules on them um, when we go through that bait stamping process, just because. Um, but I like to show that there. So you, you have the ability to um, customize that as well. And it doesn't necessarily have to have anything to, to do with confidentiality. So let's skip over discovery fields and then talk about hot fields and fields, which we can also find down here. If we skip over redaction reasons, we'll come back to that. But um, fields and hot fields. The way that I like to describe this is that all hot fields are fields, but not all fields are hot fields. It's kind of like squares and rectangles where um, a field first has to exist to be able to be elevated into a hot field, which is just saying that it is a more important field that you're going to be using regularly. So for example, if I were to click into the fields and show additional fields, you can see that there's so many different fields. A lot of them are blank, things that have not been filled in yet. Um, that probably most of these are not all that important and you don't need to use regularly. Um, but if I go up to the hot fields, these are things that, um, and actually all of these are custom fields that I've created that I've elevated to hot fields that are part of my review process. Um, so like, if I wanted to have the ability to type in notes, I have this attorney notes field where I can go ahead and type that in. Or if I wanted to mark a document, not just responsive, but say this is actually really important. Um, it's a hot document or a key document in my case. I wanna be able to quickly and easily find those documents that are gonna be important for my case. I can um, 
filter or search for hot documents very quickly and very easily if that's part of my review process. Um, people of interest, things like that. And so what I would do is first create the field if, if it was something like that. I would go into my settings, coding, create field. And for like attorney notes, I'll title it attorney notes. And then because I want it to be able to be typed, I would make it a paragraph input type and then hit create. If I wanted it to be that hot doc, I would make it a single checkbox, a true or false value that I could use and then hit create. And then like that people of interest, I would use either a pick list where I could choose one or multiple values and I would just enter in those values um, when I create it or a locked list where I can only choose one of those values. Um, and so there's a bunch of different ways that you can go about creating these fields. Again, just comes down to what that process looks like for you, um, what you want to have elevated there. It's another layer of organization um, and just effectively communicating it to all parties who are gonna be involved in this review process and when you should be marking things up. But once you create those fields, they will just show up down here at the bottom of these fields. They'll be down here. These are the most recent ones that have been created. But if you wanted to add them to your hot fields, you just go ahead and hit add new find the field that you want to use. Let's go ahead and use like US states and add that. And when you hit done, that field has been added to my hot field, which I could then reorder depending on the importance. Put it right under hot docs, done reordering. And when I go back and refresh this page in my hot fields, I now see US states, which I could mark as Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, or Arkansas, and so I could go ahead and choose that. And so that's how you can go about customizing your fields, creating your hot fields um, and editing that information.